Now in this section we're going to talk about the RT table web part. It's a web part we've seen uh, several times before when we were discussing st data sets, uh, primarily because, well, it's the only web part, or excuse me, its only purpose is to show data sets of one type or another, either uh, relational data sets or web services data sets. So naturally when we talked about data sets we, we spent a lot of time on it. So it is a part that displays columns and rows of data obviously. And uh, and as I said, it only uh, displays the data from relational or web service data sets. Now, when we continue after my next demonstration, uh, when we continue with this, we're going to get into all the details. There's a huge amount of details on how you can configure this. If you notice, there's a whole section on RT table behavior configuration. We'll get to that soon enough, but let's just refresh everybody's memory. Let's just show how a, a an RT table data or RT table web part is is used. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my current workspace here. I've just got a basic web part page. I'll add a new web part. This web part is going to be RT table. And let's see, let's scroll it up to there. Yeah, there we go. It's RT table web part. I'll go ahead and click on add. And of course, like all the other tables, it's uh, it's going to be uh, require configuration at this point. So I'll go in here, choose modify shared web part. There were no data sets selected. Data sets are, again, the only thing that you're going to be using here. In fact, if you notice, there isn't even a tag search here for you to choose. So I'll go out and I'll choose a data set. Now the data set I'm going to choose here is one of the data sets we've configured in a previous exercise. If you've forgotten how to do that, if you've forgotten how to configure data sets, go back to, there's a section on configuring the uh, relational database data sets. And that's where, we're going to conf where we've configured this. It was a data set uh, built on Northwind database and the one I created was called Nick customer list so I'll go ahead and select this data set again and when I select that data set we are presented with a list of the available columns not much to show you here there's only two and we're using both of them customer ID and company name but if I were going to go out if I were to go out and get a different list like for example I can get my list of details this was called the uh, Nick Details. If you notice in this list, it's a different list altogether. It's showing me every single piece of information about our customers in the Northwind database. Then we have a choice of how we're going to use that there, or which ones we're going to use. We can move those into the selected column range. Now, the uh, this section on behavior settings we'll discuss in great detail later on. That is something that has to be pre-configured uh, if you are to create or if you want to associate more advanced formatting you have to prepare that by creating an RT table configuration and associating it with a data set first again more on that later but let me go ahead and remove that data set I'll put the one back that I just created or that I just removed this was called Nick a customer list and now with this uh, with this customer list I'm going to be showing customer ID and company name. And this particular customer list is going to show me all my customers. If I want to expand that, of course, I can just change this here and it will show more. And there's optionally uh, some filtering or some filtering options available. Now those uh, these filter options are for use in passing arguments to web parts that require some kind of a filter argument. So for example, uh, it's most commonly used with something like the Microsoft uh, Excel services web part that allows you to pass this as a filter argument to a an Excel spreadsheet. Now I'll go ahead and I can either choose apply. If I choose apply, of course, I'll remain here in editing the um, the dialog box. Or if I click on OK, that will exit out and show me the results. If I had not been yet in edit mode, that would have returned me back into just the regular run mode. So there are results. As you can see, it's it's showing me a list of results. It's only showing me the first 20. That's what I had specified. I can choose this to go forward and see the other uh, the other entries. Now, as I've demonstrated previously, it's possible to make uh, web parts associated with this, or excuse me, to associate uh, things with these links with uh, with any of these entries here. So, for example, if I would like to associate a uh, a connection to a 
another web part and specify that this value is sent to that web part. Uh, for example, if this brings me up in order history for this customer, that's something I can do through the web part connections. Now, and that would most likely be using something like a, uh, a web part from Microsoft that would allow you to search uh, the past argument for database entries of some type.